Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. How are you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce Nathan. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. And I feel like uh, I feel more connected with you for the video viewers. We both have a sales gorilla in the background now. Yep. 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 We're twinsies. What are we going to be talking about this week? I've been doing a lot of building and leading of a team. We've been doing this sales gorilla thing now for two and a half years. Over the last two and a half years, I've picked up, um, a running partner here and a team member there. And we've been, we've been putting different people in place. And one of the things um, I've been dealing with lately is building that team and kind of honing it and leading that. And you and I've had a couple of conversations briefly about, you know, what it's like to have a team and put a team in place and the ups and the downs and the cool stuff and the not cool stuff. And I figured, Hell, let's uh, let's talk about some insights as I see it on building and leading a team for your own business. Nice. So, let's before we get into that, let's kind of talk about. Have you read the book The E Myth? Uh, I think maybe years ago, like years ago, seven, eight, nine years ago. If so, it's been out that long, then I think I have, but it's been forever. Yeah. So one of the one of the kind of key takeaways from that book is there's different roles that an entrepreneur plays. The entrepreneur plays the role of the creative guy or creative girl coming up with the ideas. And then the idea or the role of the implementer, making sure that those get those ideas actually get, uh, they come to fruition. And then the true entrepreneur plays the role of the person that steps back and makes him or herself obsolete from all of those other roles and says, from now on, I'm just going to be the business owner. Now, a lot of our people maybe aren't at that point. A lot of our people are, Hey, I really love copywriting. I just want to get more clients. My bit, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the sole business owner. I work for myself, but I have a job. I'm just my own boss. Uh, I don't have a full on business you're kind of in that middle stage right now where you still do the thing, you still help people, you still train people on how to get more clients, but you're also building that team and you're working. Are you working towards making yourself obsolete in your own business model? Yes. However, there's a caveat there. Um, This business as it's structured is my made for radio face as the brand. And what I mean by that is it's my personality, my demeanor, my character, right? Who I am is the brand. Um, We are moving in the direction and have been for some time now moving in the direction of creating specific products that get a specific result so we can automate that stuff so it's there. Because what I actually really like doing is I like small group me one on small group, six to 12, 15 people on a regular consistent basis at a super high level, all strategy. That's what I want to spend my time doing. So we're in a transition phase basically where I've been building this brand as me as the the front of it. And I've built a team around me that's able to take that and productize it and systemize it so I can step out of that quote unquote limelight and do what it is that I want to do while still having a presence in the marketplace and a business. That is exactly what you're talking about. This business um, probably won't ever be completely devoid of me creating content, but all of the other stuff, running the business, where we're doing it, how we're doing it, all of that other stuff is now already being handled by other people on my team. So I can just do me, right? Mm -hmm. Um, However, there are offshoots of this business that are 
fully me hands off, which is really cool because like, let's be honest, I don't want to work all the time, right? I'm not a hustle bro. I don't want to grind it 19 hours a day. Fuck that. Um, so there's aspects to it, um, where it was intentional to set it up and structure it in such a way that, yeah, I don't have a job, right? I've got input and guidance and advice on where we're going, but then there's a team of people that do the doing of getting it there. So I want to kind of talk about some of the important things. I know that personally for me, when it comes to the podcasting stuff, I'm, I've kind of built a little bit of a team when it comes to copywriting. I have editors for the podcast. I have uh, a, an engineer that mixes down the stuff. I have for copywriting, I have two different copy editors that I send work to so that I'm not taking on everything, but I'm definitely not at the point where you're at. Um, but the biggest thing that I had trouble with was picking somebody who I trust, letting go and saying, I, I've got to find somebody who I trust to do as good as or a better job at this particular aspect than me. And that was so hard. So as a business owner, how do you go about finding or what's what's going on in your mind what's what leans on the decision to um to hire or not hire certain people for certain positions well it's it's funny you started there because that is that's the most important thing it's it's critical right we're looking at this from the perspective of i'm it right i do all of the doing i'm the business and and i'm i'm saying this in in third person terminology, right? If you're listening to this and you don't have a team and you don't have a quote unquote business like that, everything that you do is all you. So if you don't go into work that day, work doesn't get done. When you start building a team around you, the absolute most important thing, it's critical, is the right people. It's, it's ICA, ideal client avatar, on a completely different level. Um, having business partners, having people that are integral parts of your team, they're all individually like marriage, right? And from my perspective, some people, some people can, can get away without thinking and feeling and being like this. I have to really love and respect and value somebody or I don't want to be around them. And if you don't want to be around somebody that's on your team for your business, eh, that's, a, that's a recipe for disaster, right? Um, so the people and the right people are the most critical thing. What's interesting about that, you said something in there that I would have said the exact same thing 12 months ago. I need to find people that can do what I do in this area, at least as good, if not better than I can. And what I've realized is that in many areas, that's actually the wrong way to see it in, in many areas of, of the team for a business, realistically, they need to be about 80% as good as you or better. And if you can get that, then you're, you're good. As long as the relationship's solid and you and that other person are committed to doing whatever you're doing together, together, because here's the thing, the thing that you do is your baby right? Nobody's going to love your baby as much as you love your baby. Even, even other business partners in some instances, like they're there for different reasons. They've got different motives, different agendas, but it's critical that you are totally on the same page with these people that you totally dig them. You can be honest. You can be clear. Like the communication aspect of it is critical, but there's a caveat to this. And this is where some of the higher level stuff that I do really comes into play. The stuff that you stay doing in your business should be your genius zone. We've talked about this on, on multiple episodes, starting with episode eight. Your genius zone, understanding what it is and defining it. Yes, the business is you and you do all 19 things that it takes to do your business. But out of those 19 things, 15 or so of those things are like chores and you don't really care for doing. And then there's one or two things that you absolutely can't stand doing, but you do it anyways because nobody else is going to do it. And then there's one or two things that you love doing. The whole idea is to get your job rolled down to those one or two things you love doing. 
and identifying other people that do those other things and that's their genius zone. When you're able to find that with people that you totally dig, now you've got that perfect marriage, right? And at the end of the day, in most cases, they're going to be 80% or better than you are at doing that thing. And that's more than plenty. Okay. So I lucked out. People that don't know, we've got an engineer, Brett Vinat. He runs the School Sucks podcast. He's infinitely better than I am at mixing down podcasts. So I lucked out by getting probably one of the best podcast producers in the world to uh, sign on and help us out with this. But you're saying that having somebody who's not orders of magnitude better than you at the thing that you don't want to do anymore, it's not as important as the mental hangup that I was making it. Yeah. And the, the reality is finding somebody who can fill those shoes of doing like in this instance, having Brett do the, the engineering of the podcast. That was two things pure happenstance. It's a unicorn that never happens. And it did happen because you and he had built a long-term relationship over many, many years. And it just seemed to fall into place. That's not actively building a team. That's, it just happened to fall into place over the course of a dozen or so conversations. And I'm making some assumptions here, but I would guess that that's fairly accurate. Um, actively building a team, going and hiring a copywriter, going and finding somebody to do web design, going and finding somebody to do graphic stuff, going and finding somebody to produce your podcast, actively going and doing that to essentially quickly build a business. Um, you don't always find people that are that amazing at their craft to put right into place typically because they are, they're, out of most people's range as far as, oh, you want to hire me for that thing that I'm the, the end all be all at? Sure. It's two fifty a year and I only work two hours a week. Oh, hmm. Interesting. Right. A lot of people don't look at it from that perspective, but that's the reality. You don't go find somebody on Upwork who's the end all be all at this thing. And now they're a permanent fixture on your business. And it happened in one conversation. That's unlikely. So if that's not the case, if for the average business owner out there that doesn't have that unicorn situation, um, how do you go about defining what the people are going to do and, and who's going to be the right fit and kind of laying out how it's going to go moving forward? You need one of two people, unless this is you and it's probably not. You need an OBM, an online business manager who is skilled and experienced and no what kind and knows what kind of people you need for the different roles, or you need somebody who's naturally an ops manager. And if, if you don't have one or, or both of those people in place, you need to find somebody that's good at that. You can take a stab at defining the roles. You're probably fairly um, adept at doing all the 19 things in your business. You need to define what those different things are and categorize them into, well, it would make sense for somebody to do this and this and this because it's all kind of the same thing. Cool. And as you go through that process and you're, you're defining all the different things that you do in your business and you categorize them into different categories, you need to find yourself an OBM or an, and a good one, not somebody who's, oh, I'm a, you know, I've been a, a VA for three different people for the last nine months. I'm an online business manager. That's not what I'm talking about. You need to find somebody that's skilled and experienced and they've dealt with managing teams of people or you need to find an ops manager who goes, ah, that's CFO stuff. Ah, that's CEO stuff. Ah, that's marketing director stuff. Ah, that's this, right? You need somebody who that's their genius zone is identifying the players that you need to have put in place. And it, for most people, it doesn't start with, Oh, today I'm by myself, but tomorrow I'm going to have seven people on my team and we're going to go crush it, bro. And generally this is done over three to six months and you start with one person, then you add another person, then you add another person. It's, it's gradual. It's intentional, but gradual. And I think the thing to, really hit home as we're ending this episode is it's necessary. If you want to continue doing the thing that's in your genius zone, as your business gets bigger, there's going to be more demands. There's going to be more tasks. There's going to be more moving parts. 
And if you want to be able to provide 100% of your attention and, and effort and quality to the thing that is what you love doing and that your clients really appreciate from you, you're going to have to start building out a team. Yeah. It's, I mean, you, you're either stuck owning your own job long term or you build a small team and you've got a boutique awesome thing that's yours, but you've got all the extra hands that are all in love with the thing that you do, or you grow a business, scale a business, and sell a business. Those are the three options. So what is it that you want? Nice. Okay, Landon, another fantastic episode. If people want to check out more episodes of the podcast, where can they go to get that? Head on over to salesgorillapodcast.com. Awesome. All right, man. Fantastic conversation. And I appreciate you spending the time with us today. And until next week, I'll catch you later. Awesome sauce, brother, man. Have a great day. Don't forget. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I don't really like. Peace out, Cub Scouts.